there's like a moment where the plate goes into the fix and it turns from a negative to a positive. And I remember seeing the image kind of come through this fog and just being like, oh, this is what I'm doing now. Like, this is what I'd like to do. And I remember my teacher expressing that to my teacher and her being like, good luck. <laughs> it's really expensive and the learning curve is steep. Uh, and I was just like, challenge accepted, thanks. Uh, this stuff that I'm doing right now, like the silver nitrate, uh, it's not like, get, like, breathe bad, but it's like, if getting my eyeball bad, so I should be wearing goggles. Be safe, kids. Do it. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Essentially, wet plate refers to the overarching process, and then there's uh, derivatives uh, basically on what you're making it on. So I'd make mostly tin types, which means it's done on metal. So in this case for me, it would be aluminum. You kind of create the skin on the plate, do like a little finesse with your hands, and then put that while it's still wet into a silver nitrate bath, uh, which is part of what makes it light sensitive. So at this point, all these steps you can do kind of in the light, but once it goes into the silver nitrate bath is when it needs to be red light or darker. I shoot the image either with a tremendous amount of light or sunlight, which might be a longer exposure, take the plate back into the dark room, process it immediately. A lot of people think it's development, but it's actually just the fix pulling out the unexposed silver from the plate so you can see the black ground and see the image essentially. Something that I think is really interesting now with digital photography or with our phones where a lot of those images that we make that are like documenting our lives, documenting the people around us are only living on our phones and we don't, we don't make things anymore and we don't print things. And so I wonder a lot about like what that's gonna look like if those things get lost or, you know, when the apocalypse happens <laughs> and you know, all that's left, it's gonna be tin types, let me tell you. There's this deep history of postmortem photography with wet plate. A lot of time, that's like the only time people got photographed. Yeah, so these are like some of the postmortem images, like that. So the children are dead in these images. Yeah, like they tried to pose them sometimes as if they were alive. Like this is like a kind of like a hidden mother thing where there's like somebody with a, sh a, a sheet over them holding the child up. We have a totally different relationship with death that now than we did then. I think people were a lot more comfortable with it. So it was okay for them to have the only picture of their loved one be of them after they're no longer in their body. The desire to have documentation of your visage or like your family, that kind of thing, it's, our memories are so unreliable, especially when somebody's gone. I'm gonna get emotional, sorry. <laughs> you know, like a lot of those pieces go away really fast. You know, the sound of their voice, the way they smelled, even sometimes the way that they looked. And so I think, you know, photography plays this really beautiful role where it's like we at least get to hang on to like the shape of their face, or the way their eyes looked, and especially specifically in that moment. I'm not a super history nerd or buff. I'm actually like kind of surprised I, I got so drawn into this process. I think for me, it's, it was more like the, the tactile nature of it and the chemical process of it. But like the history is super interesting and something also that I try to, not try to, I have to speak to you in my work. You know, we don't see a lot of tintypes or wet plate images of uh, black and brown folks. Part of that is like access, right, in class. People paid to have these images made and you know, when you're a slave or oppressed, like you don't really have a lot of access to those things. There are like some images of black folk, they're really rare, it's like when you find uh, like a tintype like that, they can be really expensive it, because of the rarity. I feel like it's 
part of my job and, and my responsibility as an artist working with this process to like think about that, address that, and try to like add to a new history that we're doing now with this process. So I grew up in Houston, Texas. I'm a first generation American to Venezuelan immigrants. Uh, my mother came from Maracaibo and then my father from Caracas and they both immigrated here, gosh, probably in the 80s, 90s. My mom was a beautician, but she was really creative. She was really good at like floral arrangements and obviously like hair can be really creative and stuff too. And, and then my dad was a personal trainer, but he was like an aspiring actor as well. So they were both like really creative, like they're both like amazing dancers. My dad loved to sing. They're all like mixed up. They're just like random pictures. Like these are like some of my mom's clients. Like she loved, I don't know, she like really like, was like, oh, let me take pictures. Like she literally, look at this, this is so funny. She, this is her coat. And I don't know who these women are, but this is, my mom took these pictures of these women in her, in her coat like in her house for some reason, be like, yeah, model this for me or whatever. So my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer kind of late stage and struggled with that really heavily for a year and then passed away in 2012. And then my father has always struggled with mental illness. It was kind of acute for about a decade. And then in 2016, he ended up taking his own life. So I've, Unfortunately, experienced a lot of loss early on. I had really deep connections with both my parents, so it was, it was really tough. I think a lot about them when I make pictures. So especially for families and, you know, I, I think a lot about being able to give somebody something like this that they can hang on to for a long time. And it, it, it's kind of bittersweet where I, I'm glad that I can do this for somebody else because I didn't get to do it for myself. I treasure the fact that my mother was like this much of a documentarian or that, th that she cared this much about imagery. And it's like, you know, knowing, I don't know. It's like kind of like, Like, knowing that I was loved by them, it's really nice. Like, that's how I feel when I look at them. I was like, oh, wow, she, like, loved me so much. She was just, like, um, like, there's just, like, so much evidence of that in every picture that I look at, and so it's really great. All my life, I've prayed for you. I feel like my life, I've experienced a lot of instability. And with wet plate, there's a lot of like unpredictable chemical anomalies, that kind of thing that can happen due to like temperature or the way I've handled a, something or how old the chemistry is. But being able to control something wild like that has like helped me feel more stable in my life. The human experience is having something and losing something. At some point in our lives, whatever that looks like, we're going to experience loss. Photography speaks to a lot because it is like capturing these like specific moments in someone's life that you can look back on. I don't know, it's a testament to how time trudges on and, and things change. And I think that's painful and beautiful at the same time. I'm not sure.
Artist Cards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com. 